Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how the Radeon 7 behaves when the memory is overclocked. I initially thought about making this video similar to the ones I usually do where I do the split screen thing. Um, I show you guys the real time performance. Since there were so many games, that, that would have taken way too long. And on top of that, I had to show a, a lot of metrics and I just kind of wanted to go over a few things. So I decided to do a Excel sheet instead. Um, the Excel sheet is pretty self-explanatory, but I'm just going to go over a few things just to make sure everything's clear. So over here on the left side, we have our settings. I try to use ultra settings for all the games. Um, I think apart from two, I use the ultra pretty much for everything apart from two. I think Shadow the Tomb Raider, I use the high preset, and Mankind Divided, I use the high preset as well. This is a super demanding game, so I kind of had to lower the settings a bit. But other than that, everything was pretty much set to ultra for the rest of the games. In the next column, I have the type of test I ran. All the games that show bench have built-in benchmarks. I tried to use as many of these as possible to prevent any uh, disparities between the tests. Obviously not all games have them, but it's really nice when they do because that way you have an exact replica every single run and there's no uh, variation in the tests. And the rest of the games I wrote what area of the game I benchmarked, uh, specific maps or zones. The next column is pretty self-explanatory, just the game itself. Uh, next to that we have the APIs. Now, all of these numbers you guys see right here were based off of three runs. So I ran every single one of these games three times. I then took the average of those three runs, and this is the number you see right here. And in the very last column, we have our percent gain. And uh, at the very bottom, we have the average percent gain across all the games I tested. So as you guys can see, every single game without fail showed some form of improvement by overclocking the memory. The amount varies quite a bit from game to game. You know, you have certain games where there's hardly any difference like Rainbow Six Siege, um, The Division 2. But then there's other games like uh, Resident Evil 2 where you see a pretty large increase in performance simply by overclocking the memory. So overclocking the memory is definitely something I would recommend regardless of what you do with your card. Um, it hardly increases your power consumption at all. And as you guys can see, it, it gives you a pretty nice boost in performance. So our numbers here on the right side aren't really in order since, well, I set them up based on API. But down here I did make a graph just to show you guys, kind of visualize it. So as you guys can see here, we go all the way from 1% increase in performance, close to 4.5%. So uh, overclocking your memory is definitely a good idea. Now, I don't really want to drag on the video for too long since all the information is kind of out there. Feel free to pause the video and, you know, just take your time looking at the info. Now, this is going to be part one of two parts I plan on making. I did well over 30 runs to uh, gather this data, so it took quite some time to make. And I am planning on doing a part 2 where I overclock the core as well. I'm going to be overclocking the core by 200 megahertz to see how the memory increases performance when the core is added to the mixture. As you guys probably already know, the Vega 64 loves memory overclocking. You see some pretty massive performance increases simply by overclocking the memory on the Vega 64. And I kind of suspect we're going to see similar numbers with the core overclocked a bit. I'm thinking our percent gain is going to be quite a bit higher than with our core set to stock at the 1800 mark. So stay tuned for part 2. I'm going to be doing a side by side so you guys can see all the data in one go. Once I finish collecting all of the overclocked data. So make sure to stay tuned. And I'll try to drop the video maybe tomorrow or the day afterwards. We'll see. Thanks for watching guys. Peace.